This is episode 202 of the Beyond the Food Show, and today we are going to explore how to step beyond our struggle. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Going to Beyond the Food Show. I'm Stephanie Dozier, a clinical nutritionist and emotional eating expert, creator of the Going to Beyond the Food method, and founder of the Going to Beyond the Food Academy. Corporate executive turned health expert with my own journey with weight, body image, and food, it's now my mission to help smart, successful women like you live confidently right now and unconditionally. Ready, sister? Let's do this. Hello, sisters. Stephanie here. I'm very excited today because I've got a big announcement to share with you before we get into how to move beyond our struggle. The scholarship program for the Going to Beyond the Food Academy is open. Yay! So for those that are new to my world, we have a scholarship program to help women in needs to join the Going Beyond the Food Academy. We have been running this program now for two years, and we've helped five women in the last two years to go beyond the food. That would, in other way, not have been possible financially for them to join the program. We've helped a lady from Croatia, which for her, the tuition for the academy was half a year of salary. So there was no way she was able to afford that. We're able to grant her a scholarship. We help a woman that had just left a very abusive relationship with her three children and was using food as a way of feeling secure. And she was really caught in that spiral of using food. We were able to grant her scholarship. But I could go on and on and share a very personal story for every one of our scholarship recipient, but my message is for you out there. If you know someone, a woman, obviously, or somebody that identify as a female gender that is in need of going beyond the food, that is struggling with her emotion, that has mindset around food that actually is bringing her down, struggling with perhaps overeating, binge eating, emotional eating, and there is no financial capacity for her to be able to pay our tuition fee, I would like for you to share this opportunity with this woman. Or if it's you, right, you're in a, in a financial difficulty situation, and you need some help, go on and fill up the application. So it's an application process. We accumulate them until September the 2nd, and then I go through them personally, and then I grant the scholarship, and then we actually start September the 6th. Now, I just want to caveat this to say the scholarship program is not meant for someone who has the financial capacity, but chooses to not invest in themselves because of all kinds of different situation around them. That's not the scholarship program is meant for. And I see that in the application very quickly. So I would ask for you to refrain and to leave this opportunity for someone who really does not have the capacity, will likely not have the capacity in any time soon. And for you, if that's you, who you do have the capacity, but you choose not to invest, that's a whole other discussion that me and you need to have together about investing in yourself and trusting yourself and respecting yourself and moving on beyond this failure drama that is in your head. And I think today's episode is going to help you with that if that's you. So application open August 22nd to September the 2nd. The link is in the show notes, stephaniedozie.com slash 202, or you can go directly to stephaniedozie.com slash scholarship, read the instruction there and fill up the application. Now, how do we get beyond our struggle? And when I say how we get beyond our struggle, I want to say this and frame this podcast in saying, this is not just a message for you if you're struggling, but it's also a message for my former self. It's the advice that I wish someone shared with me when I was struggling, which is basically from the age of 12 to the age of like, 38. That entire period of my life was a period of struggle. 
but I didn't know what I'm about to teach you today. So that's why I said this podcast is like a message to my former self. And it's the advice that would have changed the trajectory of my life would have known it. This is how powerful what we're going to talk about today is. That's what I now practice every day because it is a practice what I'm going to teach you today. It's not something that like you put your finger on it and then you're done. You got to practice this on a daily basis. So think of it as a message for you, but it's also a message to my own farmer self. So you ready? Let's do this sister. How to step beyond the struggle. Now the struggle that I'm going to use air quote here can be anything, right? It could be the weight struggle, the career struggle, the relationship struggle, the addiction struggle, whatever the struggle is or the cause of your struggle, the framework I'm going to teach you today can be applied to get this struggle resolved. I am going to narrow the struggle around weight because that's the purpose of this podcast. That's what I teach. That's what I help women with. But if you're randomly listening to this podcast and say, I don't have a diet issue. I don't have a body image issue. I don't have a weight issue. That's not for me. Eh, Wrong. (laughs) That's for you too. Just change the word weight with whatever your struggle problem is and apply the same framework. So how can we step beyond our weight struggle? Now, another fundamental that we need to understand as we move through this framework is the concept of struggle. What is a struggle? A struggle is a long and difficult attempt to achieve something. It's like painful, it's misery, it feels bad, it's frustration, it's overwhelm. It's all the emotion we don't want to feel in our journey in resolving a problem, achieving a goal. In this case, it's our journey towards, air quote, fixing our weight or body problem, right? The struggle, the journey to resolve this. This struggle, what we deem as a struggle, occupies a huge part of our resources, When I talk about resources, I'm talking about, yes, financial, right? But I also talk about time, mental space, emotional capacity, energy. This struggle, the struggle bus to fixing our weight and body issue require a lot of our resources, okay? So I'm going to go into give you a picture of my struggle so you have an understanding of what we're talking here. 25 years of the weight struggle for me, and that was 25 years that my life was occupied by fixing my body, aka losing weight, and I did some crazy things along the way in an attempt to resolve this. The journey that I went into, the struggle that I went into was because I held the belief that the weight, the body image that I had, my self-image, the form of my body, the deposit of fat, the cellulite, all these things were the cause of why my life wasn't where it needed to be, was the cause of my stress. That was the cause of my unhappiness. It was the cause of not achieving the career that I wanted, right? The weight was the causal effect of everything that went wrong in my life. And the journey to fixing that was the struggle. And I ended that struggle around the age of 38, not because I lost the weight, but because I changed my beliefs, Right? I know this is hard for you to perhaps, if you're in the struggle bus right now around weight, it makes no sense. But I just want you to keep your mind open. I stopped struggling this 25 plus year period 
because I change the way I engage with the problem that is weight and my body. And trust me, the struggle was real. Like chronic dieting for 25 plus years, serious body image issue and self-image issue. And even when I lost the weight, here's the crazy thing. And I'm sure some of you will relate. Even when I lost the weight, because I did, like in this 25 years struggle with my weight and my body, I did lose the weight. I lost and I regained and I lost and I regained, right? Typical yo-yo pattern. But even when I lost the weight, you'd think that my struggle would be over. But it wasn't. Because then I was focusing on something else. Then it was when I lost huge amount of weight, it became my saggy skin. It became why can I not lose the little roll that I have on my belly at the front that shows up when I wear something really tight. It became I'm still not firm enough. And that's why no man is attracted to me. I need to lose more weight or I need to tone up this part of my body. And then it became about my skin and it became about my hair. The struggle continue. It, the fixation that I had just moved on to something else. The reason why this was happening was because I was addicted to the weight problem. We can be addicted to our problem. In this case, for us, weight, body, problem. Because otherwise, if I wasn't addicted to the problem, when I lost the weight, I would have said, check mark, done, right? And I would have moved on. But the problem was, and I couldn't see that back in the time, me losing weight wasn't resolving what I was hoping it would in my head. So I thought by losing the weight, I would be happy, joyful, living the life of my dream, having the perfect relationship. I would have another promotion at work. I would make more money. I would have a bigger car. Like everything was dependent on my weight. Therefore, even when I lost the weight and all those things didn't happen, my subconscious mind was like, oh, Well, it must be because we haven't lost enough weight or it must be because we have saggy skin and this and that and this and that. And we kept at my brain, we, me and my brain keep accentuating the problem and staying addicted to it because it wasn't resolving anything. Do you feel like that? Are you in the pursuit that you're going to fix your life and changing your body? I did a survey this weekend on social media. You know, I've been teaching no diet approach, health at every size for probably three years now. So vast majority of my audience sits within that belief that diet don't work. So I kind of challenged myself. I say, I posted and said, why do you still want to lose weight? And to my surprise, many people answered and they say, yeah, I still want to lose weight because... And then the reason why most people still wanted to lose weight was they held the belief that when they lose the weight, they will have less ache and pain in their body. They will be more flexible. They'll be more comfortable. They'll be able to move their body. All the things around their relationship, their physical relationship to their body, right? So that is that problem addiction. Now, Right now, if you're there, your brain is fighting me. Your brain is saying, no, it's not true. For me, it's different. When I lose the weight, I'll be more flexible. I'll have less pain. It's evident, Stephanie. The weight is the cause of my pain and ache. I know this is happening in your brain right now. I know that. I know that because that's what I call diet brain, right? This way of thinking that we develop over time to cope 
with dieting. Now, I've looked in the internet in hope of finding if someone else must have coined the term diet brain, right? So to my own research capacity, I couldn't find anyone else. Like I did literally Google search of diet brain and I couldn't find it. So I guess I've just coined the term diet brain. And if somebody else is using that out there, please let me know. <laughs> like message me on social media or send me an email, let me know. But go forward, I will address this mindset that creates the struggle as the diet brain. The diet brain is the mindset that allows you to be successful on a diet or to hope to be successful on a diet. It's the way of thinking that you've developed in order to cope with the dieting model. It's thinking pattern that are taught by diet. So one of the best example of that is the all or nothing black and white thinking pattern. Okay, because this is if you start studying psychology or neuroscience or behavioral therapy, you will learn that we have thinking patterns, right? It's called cognitive distortion. There's, I think there's 12 of them that are known, like thinking pattern, and all or nothing is one of those thinking patterns. So in working with women, what I've realized is that chronic dieter have a very narrow, specific way of thinking that differs from entrepreneur, for an example. Like it's it's two way of thinking that are different. And the reason why we become diet brain is because of how diet teach us to engage, like all or nothing, right? The diet is very clear. The model is good food, bad food. Don't eat these food. Eat only this food. And don't dare eating just one piece of this bad food because all your effort went to waste, right? So meal plan is another expression of this all or nothing, right? Everything is planned in advance. There is no space for flexibility. There is no space for life. It's like, this is the way it is. That same expression is done into fitness plan, right? This is the way you have to work out. You have to show up no matter how you feel or how your life is. It's bing, 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 right? It's very strict. When we've dieted for so many years, we have formed a thinking pattern that makes this restriction model that is dieting easier on us. We start thinking like the diet model. That's why it's so easy for women, for chronic dieter, to start a new diet. Back in the days, let's say four or five years ago, when I knew that diet didn't work, but I was still like talking about food and helping women with food, my chronic dieter were my best performer on a detox program. Why? Because they had this way of thinking for the last 20 years that like, okay, give me a list. Give me what I need to eat, not eat, how much to eat. I'm good at that. And then as I started to teach intuitive eating, the chronic dieter are the one that go on the struggle bus of intuitive eating because they don't change the way they think. That is why we are on the struggle bus is because we continue to think like the diet brain we've developed while we were on a diet. This specific way of thinking, this cognitive distortion is also serving us in continuing to think that the weight is a problem, right? It serves us in many aspects of dieting. And that's why many of you are what I call lurker. You listen to the podcast, you do my free stuff, like you've done the intuitive eating free courses, you read the stuff, but you don't plunge in. You don't actually become a client, a customer, and actually start embracing intuitive eating because your mindset is still anchored on the diet mindset. Because it prevents you, for an example, from even considering attempting to accept your body the way it is. 
Because the way you think, right, the diet brain says, no, we can't. Fat people are this and health, like you get anchored, what I hear a lot of, but it's not healthy. Even though I've given you tons of evidence how health is not linked to weight, health is a sum of healthy behavior. Yes, food is part of that and weight is part of that, but that's only 10% of it. We've talked about that at Lant. I discussed that in everything that I do, yet your brain is still anchored on it's not healthy. So we're going to continue dieting. This thinking pattern, this diet brain keeps you focused on what you believe to be the problem of your life, which is weight, which is your body, therefore keeps you on the struggle bus of weight. Here's the thing. It's all in your head. The struggle bus is all in your head. Everything in life is a choice. Everything. We live in this beautiful era of modern society that gives us a choice. In nearly everything that we do, we have a choice. And the reason why you're still on the struggle bus or you can't get off of it is because you're choosing to perpetuate the problem. You are choosing to keep the beliefs and the thoughts about the weight so you can continue to be on the struggle bus of the weight. It's all in our head. Let's go back to my struggle bus, right? Because I know what I just said right now is offending to some of you. So totally get that. Perhaps pause the podcast, go take a couple of deep breaths, come back. I don't say that it's in your head to dismiss the problem. I'm saying it's in your head because it's the fact of life. And here's the cool thing. You can change it. You can change the way you think. Therefore, you can change the struggle and the problem. Okay? Back to my story, right? All along my 25-year struggle journey with weight, because I was anchored in a way of thinking and a belief around weight, I wouldn't even see the evidence in front of me. Right? Example, I would lose the weight. And instead of saying, huh, how interesting in that. I just lost 100 pounds. I'm still unhappy. I'm still stressed. And I'm still hyper focused on my body. Even though I weigh 170 pounds, I'm still not, it's still something wrong with me. I couldn't pull myself out of this and see the evidence. Hmm, weight is not the problem. Because I was anchored in this way of thinking, nobody around me, there was no podcast talking about this stuff. There was nobody around me to say, hey, Stephanie, maybe you need to change the way you think. No one was saying that to me. So I perpetuated this way of thinking, which perpetuated the problem, which perpetuated the struggle bus. It's not until at 38, I started to look at life in a more holistic, spiritual mental psychology, went to therapy, and I'm like, oh my God, why has nobody taught me this before? And as soon as someone taught me, and my therapist told me, it's a choice, Stephanie. You choose to believe this, you could change your beliefs, you can change the way you think, which will change the problem. She taught me this. Now, this is the model of how you can change your thoughts, which will change the way you feel, which will change your beliefs. Okay. It's cognitive behavior therapy for some of you who may know this, right? So you have a circumstance in your life, you have an event, you have a trigger, however you want to call that your weight. Let's put that there. That's a circumstance, right? That's a neutral thing, right? Your weight then you have beliefs around this weight thing, and then you create thoughts around your weight. I'm not healthy if I'm overweight. My body is ugly. People will think I'm lazy, 
Whatever the thought you create about your weight then creates an emotion in your body. All of our emotions, all of them are created by our thoughts. You create an emotion about the thought, I'm fat and ugly. It makes you feel anxious or perhaps frustrated or perhaps overwhelmed or perhaps resented, whatever the emotion, then that emotion derives an action. All of our action, choices, decision are created by our emotion. So back to my body is fat and ugly. I feel resentful, right? I am then going to binge. Or perhaps I'm fat and ugly. I feel frustrated. I am going to go back on the Whole30 diet, Right? Your behavior, your action are derived from the way you feel about the problem. That's the current model that keeps you on the struggle bus of the weight. Now, here's a, here's a cool thing. Here's how you change this. You say, if I think differently, if I have different thoughts about the weight, I'm going to create different emotion in my body, which will then create different action. So then you go on the mission of creating new thoughts about your body. So one that I teach all the time is moving from fear to love, right? Dieting is fear-based thought. How can we then look at our weight from a place of compassion, from a place of acceptance, which will then create more love-based emotion, which will then derive self-care, caring, compassionate action, right? So let's go back to the whole model. For me, one of the first thought that I created around weight was my body sustained my entire life with success. I was 38 years old, at that point, I had put my body through 10, 12, 15 different diet detoxes, all kinds of crazy shit, yet I was still alive. And I even ended up in a hospital because of my exhaustion, yet I was still alive. So I started to move from a place of compassion and gratefulness for my body weight that it sustained me and kept me alive, which created the feeling of being grateful. From that place, I started to have new action, new behavior. That's when I stopped dieting. One of the action that I did is stopping the restriction and stopping the dieting and just eating how my body needed it. I hope that makes sense, right? What I'm going to do to help you in the show notes, I'm going to add to the show notes question to ask yourself so you can first understand how you are thinking about your struggle, right? What is your current circumstance, your weight? What is your current thoughts? I'm going to give you prompt question. What is the current emotion that those thoughts create? What is the action and the behavior that are derived from that emotion? Then you're going to do the exact same pattern of question, but for this new thought that you want to create about your weight, that's going to create a different feeling and a different emotion. So I'm going to add that to the show notes. These are prompt questions. So you're going to sit down with a piece of paper and you're going to model your thoughts. Current model and the reframe model so you can get off the struggle bus. The only way to get out of the struggle bus, the only way to stop struggling is to change the way you think about what you perceive to be a problem. To start working yourself out of the diet brain. So, I think I've given you enough for today. At the end of the day, struggle is optional. We can 
choose to think differently about our problem. The reason why we are still struggling with the same thing is because we are addicted to having this problem in our life because we never actually consider that it was not a problem. It was just an outcome of the way we thought about this thing. We can change the way we think about anything in life by consciously making the effort of modeling our thoughts, being aware of what the current thought process is, and then creating a new one, reframing to a new thought that we want to have about our problem. The outcome of that is to get out of the struggle bus. Cool? I would love to hear from you. I would love to hear from you two ways. Number one, by leaving a review for the podcast that would help me tremendously to rank the podcast higher so more people can be exposed to our message. You can do that by leaving a review directly in your phone, either through HiTune or Stitchers or whatever you're using, or you could also come to our website, stephaniedozie.com slash review, and that will take you to a place where you can leave your review. And I would love to hear from you on social media. If you're listening to this podcast, Perhaps DM me, PM me, share the podcast with someone else, perhaps on your feed, and let me know if you are recognizing yourself in the diet brain. This is a new term that I coined, so if it works, let me know. I'm going to keep talking about that aspect of chronic dieting, diet brain. And also, if you found what I taught you, the modeling to be something that is helping you because I can keep talking about that because I think it's the key to it all. That's what I teach in the Academy. If you want to join us for the Academy for the September wave, so our students have lifetime access so they can keep re-enrolling. What we're going to do September through December, we're going to do a live 12-week session in the academy. So if you're a brand new student, you're joining us, every week starting September 6th, we're going to narrow and focus on one lesson. So lesson one, two, three, and so forth for the rest of the four months. And if you're an old student, we'll send you an email so you can re-enroll. And I'm going to teach in this wave, I'm going to teach this thought modeling solution to our mindset. Currently, it's not being taught in the academy, and I'm going to add it, and I'm going to do it this fall. So if this resonated with you, and you think that's the key to it all for you, then consider joining us for the academy. The link will be in the show notes, or you can come to our website, and then we're going to start doing that together starting September 6th. It's going to be an add-on to the academy. If you already are an Academy student, you will get this upgrade included totally free in your portal. There you go, ladies. Let's all work on our thoughts. I love you. I look forward to hang out with you on the next episode.